All right, everyone, Maharev is here, and since the launch of Imaginarium Theater and the rise of Genshin competitor games like Wuthering Waves, Zenless Zone Zero, Honkai Star Rail, as well as upcoming amazing games like Aza Permilia and Project Mugen, a lot of things have changed for Genshin Impact. That's why I wanted to create this very important video about the situation of Genshin Impact these days. Should you play this game anymore? And advanced tips for both beginners and veterans if you decide to start playing or just having hard time proceeding forward with your account. So stay with me till the end and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join my Discord. Okay then, first question before going any further. Should you even play Genshin Impact when you already have a lot of options? I have played almost all the games at this point, and to be honest, nothing in my opinion has surpassed Genshin Impact for me. Take it as my personal opinion. Genshin Impact is one of the best games out there. Despite competing with very recently released games, Genshin is still going to give you a very amazing time. Honkai Star Rail is a turn-based game. If you are into those kinds of games, you can play it. I personally don't enjoy it, so that's a no for me. Wuthering Waves despite being not a very high storage game, and with many updates and bug fixes, still lags a lot and gives my PC really tough time staying alive. And my PC is at least good enough to play Honkai, Zenless, and Genshin very smoothly. But still Wuthering Waves even at the lowest graphics lags a lot. So it's not my PC problem, it's a problem from their server, or from their software or whatever. But overall, Wuthering Waves is fantastic. You just need to be a very hardcore gamer with high-end gaming PC to actually play and enjoy it. I despite not being a very hardcore gamer, still enjoy that game, but lags and over difficulty, and the fact that I had to give it a lot of time ruins a little bit of fun for me. As for Zenless Zone Zero, I played it for some time, but it's just fighting. It's not open world, and although the gameplay is quite fun, but the more you keep playing the more your brain starts to melt. And then add the fact that this girl don't know how to walk or run, or whatever this is called. I mean who walks like that? Looking at this makes my brain very uncomfortable. I don't really like that game. Even their character designs are not that good. Only Sakaku is a little cute. But still, nothing in this game made me feel like this game is that over the top. Genshin Impact on the other hand, has the most beautiful landscape out of any of these games, has the most fun combat which is not so challenging that you have to spend 20 minutes on just a single world boss and spend eternity farming for echoes from all around the world. It's a casual, not so hard, flashy, beautiful and colorful game having the most unique combat with elemental reactions that no other game has. And yes, any other game just has names of their elements. Genshin is the only game where elements have huge significance, and I love that. And for a new player, there is a lot of content. You may disagree with me, but that's true. You have a story all the way from Mondstadt to Fontaine, world quests, puzzles, exploration, leveling up your characters, just like every other game. The only reason you'll find people saying Genshin don't have content is because they already completed all the content in the span of past four years. Imagine completing everything this game has to offer and saying now there's no content so the game is bad. Big brain, big brain I know. If you're going to start playing Genshin now, for you my friend, there is so much content that you can easily enjoy the game for years. And although most of the people, including myself, have their own complaints with the game that I'll talk about as well, but just in my opinion, even after all these new games, Genshin is still better than all of them. So now let's suppose I have convinced you to at least try the game once to see if it suits you or not, let's talk about what you should do, and what you should look out for. I am not going to give you very beginning tips here, think of them as somewhat moderate information to keep in your mind when you start playing Genshin. Number 1. Most of the things that you watch in previous beginners' tips are still valid to this date. Like, don't spend your resin for artifacts until your AR-45, don't pull on the banner just to build pity, stay away from weapon banner, create a hyperbloom team with Dendro main character, Lisa, and Barbara for easy early content clears, and things like that, but some things have changed a lot. Number 1. Level up all the characters you get up to at least level 70. And by all the characters, I genuinely mean every character you get in the game. With the new in-game, Imaginarium Theater, you never know when you get the need to use them. It's better to stay prepared from the start. Number 2. Never use 3 star weapons to level up your 4 star weapons. A mistake almost everyone made at this point. You can get 3 star weapons from Gacha, as well as from chests in Mondstadt and Liyue. And some of these weapons are insanely broken. Harbinger of Dawn, White Tassel, Debate Club, Slingshot, and Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer. Best 3 star weapons from their respective types. Other than that, there are some niche and very good 3-star weapons you should at least have in your possession in case you need them, like Black Tassel for Zhongli, Cool Steel for Ayaka or Kaya, or Magic Guide for DPS Barbara or Nouvellet. Or you can have some meme builds with Recurve Bow on Ganyu and Traveler's Handy Sword for Chiori just to make themselves sustain. 
I wish I had few copies of them, but I had no knowledge about them when I was first starting playing the game. In short, you should have at least two or three or five copies of a three-star weapon before you start using that specific weapon for enhancement of four-star weapons. It's better to go for more characters than to go for constellations. Just pull for Nahida, Furina, Arlecchino, and Nuvolet, and use them with any of your favorite characters, and you can win the Abyss. Don't rush the game, it's not going anywhere, and you're not competing with anyone. Before AR-45, you can use your resin to level up characters, talents and weapons, and after reaching AR-45, best domains to farm for are Emblem and Shimanawa Domain in Inazuma for characters that use their burst to deal the most amount of damage, like Yelan, Xingqiu, Xiangling, Raiden etc. Deepwood and Gilded Domain in Sumeru for all Dendro-related teams, and Marishase Hunter and Golden Troop Domain in Fontaine for any team you want to use with Furina. Use their 4-star sets for behind-the-scene characters you leveled up for Imaginarium Theater, and their 5-star sets for characters you built for Abyss. I think that's enough of a general idea to get you started. As you will play the game more, you'll get more and more knowledge about your characters and what to do with your account. Or you can visit the best Genshin channel in the entire goddamn internet. In Layla we trust. I swear it's not my channel, and I have no connection with this guy. It's just that the channel has Layla in its name, so I love this channel. And his guides on all the characters are indeed good. Even if I don't need to watch them, because I already know almost everything that is there to know about this game, but maybe some of you might need it. With all that out of the way, the biggest problem with Genshin Impact is that the amount of rewards this game gives are way less than other games, so getting gacha currency is a little slower in this game. This is because Genshin developers are quote-unquote sons of nice ladies. They don't listen to anything their player base says, they do whatever the heaven they want whenever the heaven they want however the heaven they want. That's the biggest drawback of this game. Unless Hoyoverse don't fire current dev team and get a new team that treats players like their players, we have to cope with that. There's nothing we can do. So it's not like the game itself is bad, but the devs are keeping this game from revealing its true potential whether it's intentional or unintentional. Nah, it's intentional. They sure as heaven duck. That's why I play Wuthering Waves more than Genshin Impact even when I myself enjoy Genshin more. It's because Wuthering Waves developers work their cheeks off to fulfill even the most trivial demands of their player base. I mean they took the time and re-recorded this small dialogue, you're not going anywhere, just because they came to know that their players didn't like this which wasn't even the fault of voice actors, and was just a trivial matter. No one was unsubscribing them or suing them over this, they were just pointing this out as memes, but developers still fixed it, not to talk about how much work they are improving day after day to meet the needs and requirements of their player base. These developers deserve every bit of praise they can get. That's how Genshin devs should be. Just adding Labyrinth Warriors and Divine Ingenuity as permanent game mods would be more than enough in-game content for everyone to love and enjoy, and make additional movements like we have in Wuthering Waves, like Double Jump, Not Consuming Stamina, Grapple etc. would make exploration so much better. But then again, it will decrease the value of characters like Yelan, Sayu, Karar etc. but still, at least if we could run up cliffs and do a backflip from edges and a little bit of parkour from things, it would be more than enough. But instead, we are getting a small running effect of specific characters after doing an event that must be played with that specific character at level 90 and friendship level 8. How can we hope that Genshin devs will do such good things? Other than that, the game itself is top-notch. Now let's talk about two things you need to look out for and stay away from while you're playing Genshin Impact. Number 1. Online Communities No, I'm not talking about Genshin Community. I am talking about almost every community other than Genshin. You see, those who play Genshin are just being chilling, having fun, helping each other in domains, and all that good stuff. But almost every other community sees Genshin players as some low lives, and think like they themselves are the coolest mother praisers in the community and Genshin players are nothing but mint pickers, and babies, and players with no life, or whatever. It is because Genshin is a relatively old game. So they've already went past from Genshin and moved on to newer games to make themselves look cool. Now think of it like Genshin was their ex-wife. Now if you will play Genshin, meaning their ex-wife, they won't like you that much. Makes sense, right? <laughs> so even if you are having fun in the game, those communities won't agree that you can indeed have fun in the game that they don't find fun anymore. Insane, right? And I am not talking about everyone in other communities. But there are a specific large group of players who think they're smart when in reality they're absolute hypocrites. Those times were fun when I was on their nerves, too bad I deleted my previous videos just to stay away from them and killed my own channel in the process. Worst mistake of my life that I won't make again in my entire life. Second people you should stay away from are shippers and degenerates. Especially homo shippers. They're the root cause of every horrible thing happening in the community, and there are people who pander to them, 
They're the root cause of all toxicity in the community. As a proud homophobe and a decent human being, I suggest you to stay away from these unholy creatures who identify themselves as humans if you want to stay happy. And with all that, I'm done for today. See you in the next Natlon video. Peace. Hi, I am Muharib's wife, Layla. My husband would be very happy if you leave a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to join our Discord server and he will see you in the comment section. Peace.